Child, I guess we'll go ahead on and discuss this round table discussion with Yandy leading the pack. How did y'all let them do that? She went from New York. Girl, we got to talk about this. Let's juice. Come on, Blaze. It's a beat for me. What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Voodoo Doll TV, back with a quick little joke, or whatever the case may be. And girl, let me tell y'all something. Let me say what I got to say. Hold on. Hold up. You know, this was a good discussion. I'll say overall, it was very informative very educational it was everything you know not really everything but it, it, there were a lot of discussions that had but in my opinion I feel like people voiced opinions but I, I'm wondering how many people learned anything at the table especially when guess who's leading the pack guess who has the biggest voice at the table all these people from the south who got all of this experience with racism and guess who's leading the pack? Yandy. Listen, I don't have a problem with Yandy expressing her opinions. Just like I don't have a problem with anybody, any black person on in America just expressing their opinions. I'm sorry, y'all. I got a lot going on in my head. I don't have a problem with Yandy expressing her opinions and all of that. But I feel this is just how I feel. Now, I'm a, I have a bias. I do. We all have uh, biases. We all have them. Unconscious biases. But this one is on the conscious. This at the front. This ain't at the back with the unconscious. The subconscious. This is the front conscious. My bias to me, and this is just through my experience and through the way I be dealing and seeing people from New York and L.A., the East Coast and the West Coast, I believe in my heart that you guys have experienced racism absolutely. But it don't show up the same. So my problem with Yandy is, number one, you're there you go again trying to be all uh, Rosa Parks. There you go again trying to be doggone, you know, one of the freedom riders. Like, like Yandy, if, if Yandy could turn back the hands of time, I'm more than positive that heifer would be down there with Martin Luther King and uh, all at, at the rallies and the marches and all of that, getting um getting dogs bit on and all of that. Cause that's the that's the type of bitch Yandy give to me. That's just to me, you know what I'm saying? And and ain't nothing wrong with that, but. I think the problem I have with it is Yandy is trying to sound so educated on this topic when she is the least. Do you hear me? Hold on. Let me hold on. Let me see if you hear me. The least educated on this topic. And we're going to get into it. We got to get into it. Listen, listen, I'm going to get into everything that I need to get into because this has to be discussed. But you got to know I'm a drag Yandy. Go drag her. Yeah. And Sierra. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Them two idiots are as dumb as a box of crayons packed with dummies, sold by dummies, and sold two dummies. Yes, yes. Them the two dumbest bras I know. And let me tell you, let me say this. Let me say this. Both of them bitches are opportunists. Because Sierra, see, I don't want to get on it yet. Not yet. Hold on. Go back, doll. Don't do it yet. All right. Sorry. Sorry, y'all. But yeah, I'm going to drag them too. Them, the, see the ones you see up here on the screen? I'm going to drag them too. But let's get into it. So now the discussion opens up. We got the lady. What's the lady name? Dr. Sarah Webb. They said, I didn't say it, but they said that she is the doctor of colorism. In something else, but it, colorism was the one stuck out to me, girl. And I am very excited that there is an actual educated person at the table. Now, this is gonna be wonderful for the conversation, but let's get into what had happened over there at the round table discussion. Now, it opens up with what's that girl name? Y'all know the one married to the, the boy with the three earrings. Rashida, Rashida. We we open up with Rashida. Let's get her up here. Now, Rashida is getting up here to say how harmful and how hurt she was when she had heard Erica, Erica had said or had called 
spice a blue black monkey. She said that really messed with her a little bit or whatever the case. And um, she would it really harmed you know the black people because as a community, she said I didn't say it, but she said as a community we are already fighting for rights. You know what I'm saying? And the fact that Erica would get up here and call spice a blue black monkey, you know that kind of messed with her a little bit. And, 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 and it, it, it's unfair. That's what. Rashida has said now first and foremost I'm so happy that Rashida and and, and, and the bam was not there but Rashida bitch um we not buying it I know I'm not if y'all buying it put a one in the chat I'm not buying it I'm not buying this bullshit that you selling because see you another bullshit bitch like Yandy and uh Sierra and Tamika Mallory and all of them I believe three earrings really was offended for real, but I don't believe you was offended because see what we're going to discuss in this is we're going to talk about featurism. I kind of touched on it a little bit uh, in my um, in my last video. If you haven't seen it, go watch it. What's up? But no, I, this bitch right here, this bitch right here, my nigga, this bitch right here, girl, she's a bullshit bitch. And whatever prior engagements you had to, to do to where you couldn't be down there at the round table, bitch, I don't know if you're over there selling fashion over tees for a hundred dollars at that ragged ass shop you got over there. Or if you over there at the bistro making waffles at the Kirk Frost bistro. But bitch, let me tell you this. You missed this doggone on um, meeting. And whatever it was you had to do, your ass needed to be present, but you ain't want nobody to call you out. I, I know a bitch like you. I could spot a bitch like you from a mile away. I could throw that hole. I could throw a rock on that bitch and skip it across her like a dog on pine. Do you hear me? I know you, bitch, and I got your number. Got to know this. Just because... You got up here and did your little one, two, yin, 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 and said your little blue, blue, blah, 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 that, oh, uh, we supposed to just forget that you have practiced more featurism on this doggone cast than anybody? Bitch, we ain't forgot. We ain't forgot a doggone thing. Do you hear me? And, oh, uh, I'm glad you wasn't there because I don't think you have the intellectual bandwidth. To, to actually have a discussion on colorism. Because, you know, bitches, like, you don't know the difference between colorism and racism anyway. And we going to get to that. But um, I'm glad you wasn't there. Uh, I hope that whatever you was doing down there at the Frost Bistro, I don't know if you was making daiquiris or whatever, or if you was over there serving mimosas, bitch, because they said, they said, I didn't say it, but they said, girl, they say the Frost Bistro just as bad as doggone um, candy and her, her, her restaurants, bitch. That's what they said. I don't know. I ain't never been up there i ain't never go over there and get no waffles and cake and all of that but they said it's the hood bitch they say they hide the whole bank hey bitch got niggas over there bank hey bouncing and all that type of shit i said bitch i know you fucking lie that's what they said now remember i didn't say it but go ahead on up the frost bistro you might see rashida up there in her fashion over tees that she's selling for three hundred and fifty dollars, and she might be over there making daiquiris and mimosas and 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 and, and 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 whatever, whatever. Have a good time at the bistro. Get off of here, trick. Now the people at the meeting are Yandy. We don't ask you no questions. Why are you here, Smith? And then we have Young Jock, or you know when them niggas get old, they take the young and the Lil off, so it ain't Young Jock. You know how Wayne used to be Lil Wayne, but now he just Wayne, bitch, no. We got Young Old Jock, Old Young Jock, yeah, Old Young Jock. We have Sierra, she decided to leave face number five at the house and come in with face number three, because see, this was a big discussion, you know what I'm saying? She had to downgrade it, you know, at least two pegs. Then we have Lil Scrappy, he's another one, drop the Lil and just want to be called Scrappy. But you a big Lil Scrappy. You would never take the Lil off. Once you name yourself a Young or a Lil, that's your name to the last day you breathe. Do you hear me? And then we have, uh, oh, girl, Insecure Amy. And, you know, in this episode, I understood why she's so insecure, but we going to get that. And then we have Spice. Original Spice, Old Spice. Not the Ice Spice. This the real Spice. You know what I'm saying? 
Don't take offense, my Jamaican people. Blah, blah, blah. I love y'all. I'm just trying to differentiate for the churn. The churn don't know that this spice is a different from the ice spice. You know what I'm saying? This is the um, this is the earth spice. See, the ice spice, she might be like, um, girl, I'm getting off subject. I'm just saying, you know, this is a difference. But anyway, so these are the people over at the table. They have Dr. Sarah Webb. She is the one who's going to be spearheading this conversation, or at least she thought till Yandy got up there, girl. Yandy, oh. The New York people, somebody from Harlem. Somebody send, who all up there from Harlem? Who could I say, y'all send down here to come pick Yandy up and bring her back up to New York? Girl, somebody go get, um, somebody go get Diddy to cut his ass down here and Diddy bop and Harlem shake all the way to pick up Yandy and cut her ass back up to New York. Because I am growing weary of this heifer. Do you understand me? But anyway, shout out to the Dr. Sarah Webb or whatever your name is. Now, once we got over that, the first thing they want to talk about is bias and prejudice. What's the difference? Now, everybody has a bias. We all know it. Which means, like, for instance, I'm from New Orleans. My bias is New Orleans got the best food in America. Go argue with your mom. That, I'm not going to argue with you, but that's my bias. So when I go up here to Atlanta and found that the girls don't know how to cook, and y'all remember when Sierra had opened that homeless shelter and tried to pass it off as a restaurant and had them people over there eating that stuff, uh, and she was serving food like a damn maid. Y'all remember that? Yeah. So, you know, I seen them shrimps, and I ain't like what I saw. You know, so at that point, you need to stop cooking. Now, that's a pre that's a bias, I'm sorry. A prejudice would be, I don't want to sell you or feed you or give you no food because I don't like you simply for the, the, the reason of your skin color. Or I don't like, my prejudice could also be, you dark skin. I don't want you in my uh, in my section like Chris Brown did. Did do it. Uh-huh. That's a prejudice. You know what I'm saying? But the bias and prejudice discussion came up and also racism and colorism. Now, the ladies say racism is a system and it's all about power now ma'am i feel like you didn't do the definition much justice uh, uh because racism is a system it is about power however we need to dive a little deeper into racism and then we're gonna dive into colorism because i think colorism is your thing i don't think the racism part is i think the colorism is your thing but let's dive into the definition now, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I need y'all to listen and pay attention real good. Open your third ear. You know how they say open your third eye? No, open your third ear because I need you to intake what I'm about to say because there's a lot of confusion about what's racism and what's colorism, okay? Now, let's take a look at this definition. The definition says racism as a noun is a prejudice, discrimination, or antagonism by an individual, community, or institution against a person or people on the basis of their membership in a particular racial or ethnic group. Typically one that is a minority or marginalized. Pause. Skr, skr. Now, the educational system has created or has fix, fix, fictitiously, I'm trying to get the words out, I'm sorry, has fictitiously created this so-called black and brown coalition. And this is where all of the stuff gets mixed up, right? So they have created this black and brown coalition that us black and so-called brown, well, so-called black and so-called brown people know really does not exist. What do I mean? Now, first of all, let me say this. Disclaimer, if you got sensitive ears, this ain't for your fat log out. I got to say what I got to say because I got to educate my people. You know, if you feel played because I'm saying something you don't like, log out. Because if I see it in my comments, going to block you. Girl, this is easy. But anyway, this black and brown coalition that really doesn't exist is, is something that we've been taught, right? And this is a lot of what the New York and the L.A. people believe, right? Which is why Yandy could say that uh, the, 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 the clear Latinas could say the nigga word, but they can't say the monkey word. Because see, this right here, this single-handedly right here. Now, in that definition, it said it is typically of a, a marginalized or minority community. Now, under the guise of the so-called educational system, don't they tell us that the Latinas and all of them are, mi are minorities? Uh-huh. And the Asians? Uh-huh. Don't they tell y'all all of them is minorities? Well, I need every black person to look to your left and look to your right. 
and answer me this riddle me that how many of these people in these other communities get the same not just as bad the same treatment as you see the people to your left and your right who look like you i'll wait uh-huh mm-hmm so when they talk about racism being a prejudice and action and all of this stuff towards a minority or marginalized community, it, 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 it blurs the line because some minorities, i.e. some Hispanics and some black share communities, they are a part of the same marginalized community. I'm not taking that away from them. However, black, the so-called black, in, in the brown, the so-called brown people are not the same. So you get people like Erica Mina, get her up here. Erica Mina, Erica, is from the Boogie Down Bronx. If it ain't you and you from the Boogie Down Bronx, don't take offense, girl. We love you over here at the dollhouse. I'm just, got, I'm just trying to tell you a story. Now, nah. Erica Mina, Erica, is from the Boogie Down Bronx. The Boogie Down Bronx consists of Negroes uh, such as us. And they also consist of clear and black Negro or clear and Negro Latinas. Let's just say that Latinas and the Latinos. But the problem in the New York and L.A. streets are they have been conditioned to believe that a Erica, Erica Mina is the same as a Amara La Negra. Get her up here. Now, I know the photo has been airbrushed more than a doggone call. I know that. Don't worry about it. Just, just, just follow me. Follow me. I'm trying to take you somewhere. I'm trying to tell you a story. Erica Mina and Amara La Negra are both in the Latina community. So let's, just, I'm a visual person. Let's just make it up, right? Let's just say Erica Mina and Amara La Negra were both from the Boogie Down Bronx, right? And then they got black people, regular, 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 schmegular Negroes. It's just us up there. It's us, Erica Mina, and Amara Ladummy, right? So remember, we all think we are all under one marginalized community because we are marginalized. Shit, uh, the, the, the black people living in the hood and in the projects, and so are the Latinas. But the difference is Amara Ladummy is a Afro, and I hate using that because it's a, a hairstyle, but she is a Latina from African descent. Take a look at her hair. Now, well, no, because she got a wig on. Take a look at her skin tone. That's your dead giveaway to understand who is who and what is what. Her skin tone tells you everything you need to know. She is an Afro or African descendant from Latina or or Latin. Girls are Hispanic black people. Y'all know what I'm saying. Let's get Juju up here. Get up here, Juju. Y'all remember Juju? Um, what's that other Harlem dude? Ain't that nigga from Harlem? What's the nigga name? Oh, uh, who was in all uh, Dipset? Cam, Killer Cam. That's what they said they call him. I don't know. But Cam, old lady, Juju, a beautiful African Latina. See, y'all seeing the, y'all starting to see it now. Juju is a gorgeous Afro Latina. You know, uh, let's get another one up here just for a little shits and giggles. Let's get, uh, Lala. Get Lala up here. Now, I had to go find an older photo of Lala. Because, you know, Lala, right now, she thinks she look like Kim Kardashian. Because, you know, she bought her a face, too. Girl, the, the bitches is buying faces. Girl, bitch, they must be on sale, bitch. I don't know everybody going to get a new face. But look, Lala... Anthony is another Afro Latina. I think she Puerto Rican or something. Puerto Morena, or however they be saying with Fat Joes and the Lean Backs and all of them. But listen, she is another African Latina. The reason I am putting her up against the Amara La Negras or La Dummies, I'm sorry, and the uh, Jujus is because although those three women are black Afro Latinas, they have different shades. Now let's get into the cosplay. Get Evelyn Lozaya up here. Do you guys remember this trash bag, thumbhead, cosplaying whore, uh, Evelyn Lozaya? Do you remember her? Take a look at her. I'll wait. Remember when Evelyn Lozaya 
uh, after she got called out for being racist and a lot of people called her colorist, but you, you gotta be a, you gotta be a part of the same community to practice colorism. But listen, remember when she got up there and called OG a monkey, well, use the monkey emoji or whatever. And then when she got called with her feet to the fire, she want to turn around and say, Oh no, 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 no. I got African descent. I'm Afro Latina. This is the same thing as the Erica Mina. This bitch is a clear Latina woman. But when it's at her convenience, because we are in the so-called black and brown coalition, and we all part of the marginal life. Matter of fact, I just thought about it. Ain't that bitch from New York? Ain't she from up there too? Oh, bitch, New York, y'all taking L's. New York. Y'all taking L's, girl. But anyway, back to what I was saying. Because she's a part of this so-called marginalized community, they begin to believe, and we as well begin to believe, that uh, that they and us are the same. And But the thing is, we wholeheartedly believe it. They don't. Let me say that again. That might have slipped a few people. Hold on. We believe wholeheartedly that they is us and us is them. They don't. That's why you get your Erica, Erica Minas, and your, 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 what's this, Evelyn Lozaya, this, 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 uh, Gumby looking ass bitch. That's why you get them up here sleeping with your mans, sleeping with your sons and your brothers, having little chocolate mulatto babies and all of that. And then at their very first convenience, they have an issue with your ass. What is the first thing they do? Attack your dark brown melanin. And it comes up and it shows up in the OGs and the Spice officials of the world. The old Spice, the regular Spice. Now get Erica back up here. Now, the thing of it all is Erica is a clear Latina. But what she does is double dutch this shit, right? She goes on to say, hey, y'all, I'm not racist. I have brown kids. My kids are black. My man was black. I take black peen up every orifice, allegedly they said, I don't know it to be true, but I do all of that with the black you know what, and I don't understand why y'all are calling me racist, it's not racism, it's colorism, and let me just say this, to the ignorant, but you know what, I can't even say it, no, I'm, I'm gonna say it, fuck it, to the ignorant black people who windmills to their arms come out of socket for this type of shit and these type of bitches, you hold make me vomit do you hear me because instead of you educating yourself you just go on saying well that ain't racism that girl ain't racist she she a brown person she she got black in her blood look at the bitch do she look like she got black in her blood the only black that is in erica erica mina is the black that is inserted take that information and do what you will anyways so that's the difference and i well as far as this black and brown coalition let me go back so i'm saying all that to say to wrap this thing up get the black and brown coalition people back up here the so-called black and brown coalition that they said they said exists it doesn't exist and it blurs the line between racism and colorism. Now, when the lady brought up what the what racism was, she read she read the definition but she didn't go into detail on the definition and how it differs from colorism. She did a good job, but I to me feel like she didn't she just kind of gave them the flow and let them talk about their experiences and whatnot. So now the example of racism would be the belief that different races possess distinct characteristics abilities or qualities especially so as to distinguish themselves as inferior that means uh lower than you or superior which means bigger than you or greater than you to one another those are theories of racism now now that we know racism has to be inflicted from one race not ethnicity one race to another let's get colorism up here colorism the verb or the noun, I'm sorry, says prejudice or discrimination against individuals with a dark skin tone. This is the key part right here. Y'all got to listen with this part. Typically among people of the same ethnic or racial group. Colorism within the black community has been a serious emotional and psychological battle. Now the ending part of that first part of the definition says typically among people of the same ethnic or 
or racial group. Now, ethnicity is different from race, but the reason they use the example that they use as far as uh, colorism in the black community, because black people all over the world, although we have different subcultures, i.e. ethnicities, that's why you got your Amara la dummies, and then you have your Keisha's down the street, because although we both black, we got different ethnicities. And we about to get into the ethnicity definition. Because Erica Mina is a clear Latina, it is impossible, impossible for this bitch to be all colorist or practice colorism. Now, y'all have to understand why this was important for me to break this down. Because I feel like this, this is getting long-winded, but I got to say this. Listen. We are so ill-informed and miseducated on what's going on and what's really real in this world that we don't understand when stuff slaps us in our face. And that's what Yandy is going to do. And Sierra, too. I, I caught you, bitch. But, you know, I just want to put that part in there. I feel like this is getting too long-winded. I want to say more. Maybe we'll talk about it on a live or something. But now that you know that racism and colorism are two different things, say it with me, boys and girls. Racism happens within a community where there's two races and one feels they are superior and the other one feels they are inferior or the one who feels that they superior feels like the other ones are inferior. That's racism. Two different races, you know, like black and white. And then you have colorism, which happens within the same community. Now, Clear Latinas are not black Latinas or Afro Latinas. If they were, they wouldn't differentiate. Do y'all understand that? So to all my New York people, I know that I told y'all up there that everybody is the same because y'all all all living in the slums of the hood as we do down south. But see, the difference is y'all all all living amongst each other. Well, in the south, typically they go over there and we be over here. That's how they normally go, you know. But anyway, because y'all raised up in the same stuff don't mean that y'all are the same. Now let's get into this doggone thing. This is going to be long-winded, girl. Let me get into it. So now the lady leaves the discussion up to them about racism versus colorism and uh sierra first thing is because they still have the confederate flag up and i don't like that black people let me ask y'all a question i understand the definition and the meaning behind a confederate flag and i remember they took all of the statues down in new orleans and i was very excited and i was very happy and it made me feel good do y'all think that changed any type of racism in new orleans what, did that manifest anything? Hell no. So why are we worried about doggone flags and all of that? Girl, fuck the flags. We need systemic change. You know what I'm saying? But that's what happens when you leave it up to the, 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 the crew right here. Now, they get to talking about microaggressions because Sierra gave the, the uh, example about how when she was a little girl, the bus driver was a white lady and she will let the clear children on the bus. But when Sierra gets to go to the bus, she closed the door and leaves Sierra there. That is what you call a microaggression. Meaning I don't have to call you a nigga, but I could treat you like one and it's going to still hit the same bitch. What's up? That's what they was talking about with microaggression. Now, you know, here come Yandy. Get Yandy up here, girl. This is ridiculous. Now, Yandy jumps in because the lady said Atlanta is a black mecca. Atlanta is not a black mecca. It is ran by the clear people. Black people just live there a lot. That's just what it is. I know it's down the street. I'm up here. What is what is you saying? I'm not saying black people not not successful, but it ain't what they said it is. If you ever been down here, you know that. But anyway, Yandy jumps in the chat. You know, she got to she gotta look like she want to be Tamika Mallory so bad, girl. I hate it for you. Oh, Lord, New York. Y'all taking L's with the people y'all sending down here. Girl, get them back up there. But anyway, she jumps in and says, yeah, because I moved from Harlem, which is another mecca for black people, and I wanted to own a restaurant. And I found out that I had to get white girls or clear girls to go up there and get my permits because they got treated differently from the way I got treated. Well, I said, well, you dumb Dora. If... Atlanta is the so-called black mecca where black people are thriving and doing well. You know, like on some Rosewood or or, or what's the other one? Tulsa, Oklahoma type of shit. Why you got to send a white person up there to get your permits? Mm-hmm. I'll wait. And the reason is because the racism, see? See how it hit different? It hits different. Now, I'm not saying that don't happen in New, in New York. But what I'm saying is in the South, the South South, I'm talking about the Bible Belt, it hits 
different, right? So now she's saying she got to go up there and send somebody to get her permits because them clear folks won't give it to her. That's how it works. Even dummy Amy jumped up there and said she had to have a white woman come in and decorate her house so that she could get full value from her house because if not, and I get it, this happens all over America. Don't jump down my neck. I'm just trying to tell your story. She said she had to have the clear people come in and decorate her house because it looked too black. And that was the only way she can get the full value of her home. But see, the problem with Yandy is she double talks. Yandy can sit up here and say, oh, they idolize us and love our culture. And they do this and they do that. And, and then they come in and then they call a black woman a monkey. And that's not cool. But Yandy, bitch, I recall you saying you still needed to talk to her. Y'all, y'all remember that? I say it on every live. See, see, I don't like the fake outrage. And, and, and you know, let me just say this. VH1, not VH1, who this is? MTV, MTV, VH1, I don't give a damn. Love and Hip Hop and Mona Scott knew exactly what they were doing. Now, I don't know who Erica pissed off down there in the front office, but they set her up. Well, they ain't really set her up. She said the word, but they put it out there like this so that we can have this so-called quote-unquote roundtable discussion and bash Erica, even though she should be bashed. I bash the bitch a lot on my channel. If you know, you know, you know. But it takes the heat off of them as a, as a company because, you know, Mona Scott don't own that shit, right? Y'all know that? Y'all know she's just the face. She's the producer. She don't own that shit. But anyway, nevertheless, I'm getting off topic. Yandy can understand the effects of racism and how it works. But then when it comes down to uh, Spice being called the monkey because you didn't hear it yourself, you had to go talk to her and have a conversation to so-called, quote unquote, educate her. Black people, stop educating these people. These people don't want to be educated. And Yandy saw that in the clip they played. These people do not want to be educated, number one. Number two... Number two, Yandy is a bullshit bitch because she goes on to say, you know, I feel like in New York, in New York, using the, the clear Latinas using the nigga word is different from them using the monkey word. And guess what her, 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 um, her example was, she said, cause you know, we could sit around and say nigga this and nigga that amongst each other. But I tell them when they go down to the South. You can't say that down there. That's on you. Whatever happened, let the chips fall where they may. But none of us ever sit around and say, monkey, you, monkey this, a monkey that. You is so dumb. Oh, Mendeecee, put this bitch up for collateral. At this point, I'm advocating for Mendeecee to put this bitch up for collateral. This is one of the dumbest. Do you hear me? One of the dumbest. Martin Luther King died for he she is yes she is how the hell like make it make sense how in the hell can you literally sit up there and say it's okay for them to use the nigga word but it ain't okay for them to use the monkey word because they have two different connotations please see exhibit a now do y'all uh may not well y'all may not recall but back in the early 1900s you know what i'm saying they used to have black people in actual zoos this correlates to the, the zoo animal part you see the pic the picture of this little girl look at these white people damn near petting this little girl head like she's an actual animal this was a real thing like this isn't like made up this was a real thing that's the zoo part now check this part out Y'all remember when Barack Obama had ran for president that first time and all the clear racists went to go ham? Look at this photo. This is just one of many photos that was all around the internet, all on billboards. I remember driving through Mississippi and seeing this on a billboard. Do you hear me? All on the billboards because they correlate and directly connect black people to monkeys because see they think monkeys are unintelligent when the gag is we found that monkeys are probably the most intelligent primates on on top of land you know what i'm saying so they correlate us to that to de to degrade us to, you know and make us feel like nothing and and that makes them feel better about the so-called racism that they use against us get obama and his wife off of him so for Yandy to use the excuse that, but I grew up with them. And I know she, I know she ain't lying. This dude from Jersey I used to date, I asked him about that. I said, why y'all let Fat Joes with the lean backs and all of that use the nigga word? And you know what he told me? We all from the same projects. We all from the same hood. And I'm sitting here going, you niggas is crazy. 
Anyways, back to what I was saying. For her to get up here and say she grew up with them and it's okay for them to use the nigga word, but they can't use the monkey word, is the it, it perplexes me. It really makes me scratch my head, you know, because that has got to be some weird shit to believe that one is not the same as the other. To be honest, if you ask me in my personal opinion, the monkey one is worse than the nigga word. Depending on how you say the nigga word. But the monkey just puts me down to less than a human. You feel what I'm saying? That's just me. But Yandy is a bullshit bitch. Then, oh girl, then she got the windmilling and mammy and girl. They started talking about colorism in the community. And somebody had said, no, I forgot who that was. Was like, oh yeah, um... You know, colorism, I thought only women experienced it. And then she, before she could let the two black men at the table, Young Jock and Scrappy, say what they got to say, this bitch went to windmilling with her head down. This whole holler. Yes, because black men has it so bad, especially amongst the prison system. They so much more likely to get arrested and even with jobs. And just, and I'm saying, this bitch is a problem. Why is you talking for these two men let, they got two Negroes at the table. Two nappy-headed Negroes. You could have let them say what they had to say. But you couldn't wait to get up and start windmilling. Yandy blows me to smithereens. New York people, come get this bitch. Get her up out of here. I wish we was another country. I would ask and advocate for, for, the, uh, for the governor to deport this bitch. Back to New, to New York. I swear to God, I start a petition right now. Sure would. Y'all lucky this is the United States and not the United Countries, bitch. Because I surely be down there at the governor that said, sir, we got an illegal immigrant up in here. Can you get her up out of here ASAP, Rocky, please? Thank you. I sure would do it. This bitch is, is weird. She's ill. Like something is wrong with her. Yandy is what they say down here in the country in Georgia. That bitch is talking loud and saying nothing. Do you hear me? That girl is over here just trying to be a, a, a Portia Luther King. Y'all remember when Portia was getting her ass whipped up there for George Floyd? Yeah, she trying to do that. You know what I'm saying? And it bothers me because you look a fool. You look a fool, Yandy. Nobody believes that you are no activist, bitch, because you ain't. What are we talking about here? Girl, it, it, yeah, they, oh, oh, this the one. Then the bitch said, you know, these white folks be playing in y'all face, yeah. These clear people, they play in y'all face a lot. This whole said she went down there to Ghana. She flew to Ghana. Uh, by the way, black people stopped going to Ghana. But anyway, she went to Ghana. And when she got to Ghana, she went to visit the quote-unquote so-called slave quarters. And the flow was sticky. And the man told her that that was from your ancestors. That's why the flow sticky. Nigga, what? If slavery had been over 400 years ago, how the hell is the flow still sticky, bitch? Girl, y'all y'all stop letting these people tell y'all anything. These people be lying to y'all, and then y'all come back to the to the, our country and tell us the bullshit. Yandy, shut your ass. Matter of fact, you know what? I propose this. I believe since she loved Ghana so much and she went and visited the quarters and all of that, I think we should start a petition to get her ass shipped up to Ghana. I let the Ghana people deal with it. I cannot. I cannot. Let's move on. This is too long-winded. Get Yandy off of here. Now, they went to discussing on Scrappy's lives. Now, the first live after they said, because remember, niggas nowadays got to hear it and feel it and see the, the monkey sounds to believe that it is what it is. But live, not, not live, Scrappy went live the very first time and said, if she was fired, he don't think that that was right. He also went on to say, and they can fire me if they want. He was on that shit. You know what I'm saying? Or, or probably that look, I don't think, I don't, I don't peg Scrappy to be a, a, a real drug or, or whatever, but I, you never knew. I don't be over there but anyway his first live said that he didn't think it was right that she got fired and then after he seen the clip of her doing the monkey sounds and all of that then he came back and said oh yeah you right she should have got fired now let me just say this this was typical for me i was actually more proud of three earrings because three earrings was the only one had the he didn't have to see it he just heard it and said off the cuff this uh, this is a problem this bitch is a problem you know but scrappy has what I like to call white guilt. You know what I mean? Meaning like you could tell them that these people done did some of the heinous shit and for some odd reason, they gotta give them the benefit of the doubt. You know, like Andy just did. And he has that, so when he heard 
what was said amongst a whole bunch of other people, Sierra too, we gonna get on her. They automatically, well, I don't know. I gotta talk to her. Let me see what she say. They suffer from that because what they're being told, and they tell you this in school when they teach you that white angel cake is, is the good cake, the devil's food cake is the dog cake, the angels in heaven wear white, while the devil in the, in the ground wear the red and the black and all of that. They do that on purpose so that your subconscious mind can automatically tell you to offend or defend, I'm sorry, the white, you know, people or whatever. And that's what he did initially. And it wasn't just him. It was damn near the whole cast. Want nobody but three earrings in, in, in Spice, the one saying this is some bullshit. Rashida was just on there for the ride. But anyway, that's the one that stuck out for me with Scrap. Scrap had a lot to say. Well, he really had that much to say. I feel like Jock made more of, it, more of an impact, I'm sorry, than Scrap. Let's get Jock up here. Now, when Yandy was spilling her, her, her bullshit, saying that it's okay to call for, black, well, for clear Latinas to use the nigga word but not the monkey word, Jock was the first person to say, well, what's the difference? And you remember her response was, well, I grew up with them. See, that's the type of bullshit bitch I be talking about. You know what I'm saying? Who want to be so-called black but ain't really black. You know what I'm saying? Ain't really for the people. She just trying to put her name on something, just tag herself on something. You know what I mean? Then he also brought up something that was interesting. Jock said he understands why darker-skinned black women will feel inferior, meaning beneath the so-called clear or the clear, it ain't so-called, the clear Latinas is because, or light-skinned women because we rap about it in our songs. I love that. I, it, that was refreshing to see a black man take accountability because they do rap about that. You know what I'm saying? But ultimately, he said he understands why that happened. Shout out to Jock. But this was the one that got me. Jock was trying to figure out the cultural appropriation uh, comment because, you know, Yandy is over there saying, it's cultural appropriation, it's cultural appropriation. You wear our hair and talk our lingo and all of that, but you don't give us the respect of the culture. Shut your ass up. But he said, well, then, okay, Cultural appropriation, I want to know the difference between them taking our soul, our culture, and then us trying to contour our faces. Hear me out. Let me knock on the thing. Black women contouring their faces to, to make their noses slimmer and broader like the clear people. How is that different from them? Now, let me say this. I got a two-part answer to this, Jock. You, the, you old Jock, you asked the right bitch. Let me tell you. Number one, let me start by saying this. I don't contour. I never have. I never will, right? I think it's too much makeup. That's really the only reason why. And then also, I don't, I don't, I don't need to slim my nose, in my opinion. But anyway, I don't contour, but I do notice, and I have noticed that a lot of women in, in, in the industry are doing that. Now, this is what we don't understand, the subconscious mind and how it works. A lot of times we don't understand that as black women, our, our, our actions actually directly affect our subconscious and our subconscious is what drives our actions, right? So as black women, we go down there, contour our cheeks, contour our noses, and it, for us, it looks good. Because it does. When I see it on TV, it looks good. However, comma, what we don't understand is in our subconscious mind, we are now telling ourselves, our minds and our mentality and our mental that I, my wide nose ain't good enough. Mm-hmm. That my, my, my cheekbones being round, that ain't good enough. Girl, put that brown shit up under your cheekbones so we can make it look like, bitch, you looking like a white man, you know, a, a white drag girl. You know what I'm saying? That's what we doing, and we don't even realize it. Now, I'm glad that nobody, well, I don't know if they really took offense. I know uh, Spice don't contour her face for the most part. I don't know. I got to go look. Maybe. I don't know. But listen, we don't understand that the things that we do can affect our subconscious. Now, do I think that it's cultural appropriation? No, because clear people didn't come up with that. We did. However, we have to acknowledge the fact that it does make us similar or make us look similar to the people who have the long, elongated noses and all of that. Now, that was my answer on that for Jock. Now, Jock, let me see if Jock said something else. Oh, yeah, he brought up the wigs thing and talking about how black women you wear the, uh, the straight hair versus the kinky hair. And I'm so glad that the women educated on her or educated him, especially the doctor lady, because she told them she was like, listen, a lot of times there are laws that are passed that says black women can't wear braids. Black women can't wear their natural afros like it's unprofessional. It's deemed unprofessional. And even I don't know if y'all noticed this. It was I want to say about maybe less than 10 or 20 years ago. They doggone. Um. 
just made it in law where they can't discriminate against you because of your hair. And then ultimately, like the lady on who's the doctor lady, she is one of many bold women. And again, it's not just her. Me too. But that's why I cut all my hair off and I'm about to go natural, bitch. Gonna come back with the Amara La Dummy Afro. Gonna do it. But look, she is able to sit comfortably in herself and wear her natural hair, her natural face, you know, whatever, whatever. A lot of us as black women aren't able to do that. And, and I don't think we understand and realize how that affects our subconscious, which directly affects our actions. Now, the whole wigs thing, wigs were created by black people, worn by black people, and also uh, it is consistent, of course, or, or kinky hair. We don't wear the, the clear woman's weave. That's why if y'all ever notice a, a clear woman with a wig, how it looks weird on her, let me get somebody up here. Hold on. Please see exhibit A, boys and girls. Yes, Kim Zosiak is a clear woman who wears a wig. Now, why is this important? The reason the wig used to look like that, not because she didn't know what she was doing, it's because it ain't for them fat. When you think about most of the people you see wearing wigs, it is hardly ever a clear person. Now, they do like to put the little pieces in their hair. They do that. But a full wig, they don't do it because they don't. It's not of them. It's not of their culture. Black women created wigs. So I hate when uninformed or uneducated black men get up here and say, well, y'all wear the wigs and the weaves and da, da, da. Shut your ugly ass up. You don't know what you're talking about. We created it. So that is not a form of cultural appropriation because if so, all you hoes wig will look like Kim Zosiak Beerman right here. Uh-huh. Shout out to the black women for their invention. Go ahead on. And for the people who are going to try to wrestle me down to the ground, please see Exhibit B. It says the ancient Egyptians created the wig to shield shaved hairless heads from the sun. They also wore the wigs on top of their hair using beeswax and resin or resin, I don't know, to keep the wigs in place. Wealthy Egyptians or Egyptians, I'm sorry, will wear elaborate wigs and scented head cones of animal fat on top of their wigs. So we create black people, black people, people of black African descent has created, we created the wig. So we ain't taking it culture appropriate nobody culture. Let's move on. Now, Amy decides to tell a story about how she got some biracial nieces and she got some regular black nieces. And she said the women will come up and tell her how beautiful the biracial nieces are because she said Puerto Rican or Dominican or something like that in black. But that just means clear in black, girl, because if, they, if, if, if she had a... a, a if she had an Afro Latino or Latina uh, person with another black person, the child gonna come out black. But if they look biracial, cause they all girl. But listen, she said the people would come up to her nieces, the ones who biracial, and say, "Oh my God, that's so beautiful." But they wouldn't tell it to the little black girls. She said that she would have to correct people and say, "Hey, I got other children standing here too. They just as beautiful." Now that now, that tells me it don't really tell me, but it kind of makes me believe that her a lot of her insecurities come from her skin color. And this is not shade. Listen, as a dark skinned black woman who grew up as a little girl with a light skinned sister with freckles. I used to want to be light skin. I thought that was the thing to be. I was, I thought my skin was ugly. I, because everything, y'all know how it goes. Soon as you get into it with a nigga, first thing is shut your black ass up. You know what I mean? And I'm not the darkest person. I'm not as dark as spice, but in my household, I was. So I was always, you know what I mean? Like that was something that you, you got. And I used to want to be light skinned like my sister to alleviate that. So I understand. But the thing is, I was able to come to and realize, number one, my daddy always told me I was beautiful. So when I used to get them old, oh, you so pretty for a dark skinned girl. I used to shut that shit down, bat it out the air like a doggone girl, a block at a basketball game. On the move to the basket. Lost it. There's the Girl, I ain't played that. I already knew I was cute. What's up? But no, I'm saying all that to say, Amy probably suffers from that type of stuff uh, when it comes to, and I'm, I don't know the bitch. I'm just saying she might suffer from that because it, it was given like that really touched her spirit real deep and real close. And it ain't just Amy. It's a lot of dark skinned black women out here who either has gone through it or go through it to this day. It just is what the hell it is. Now let's wrap this shit up. This is too long. 
Oh, also another honorable mention. I don't know if it was Scrap or Jock, but one of them told <laughs> one of them said that the girls are going over here getting plastic surgery, creating new faces, bitch. And I hollered. Cause Sierra, bitch, we already know you went bought your face, bitch. And wore your number three face to the thing, girl. Anyway, there was only one thing that Yandy has said, anyways, that really I agree with. The one thing. When she said we should be gatekeeping and protecting our group just the same way as the so-called, uh, well, I'm going to just say the untouchables do. You know how like when you when you say something about them, they get up there and make you a cry and apologize and I'm so sorry and I'm going to go and do the education and da, 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 da. That was the only thing I agree with. But other than that, Yandy still carry your ass back up to New York. Y'all come get Yandy. New York people, I will pay your flight. I swear, first class, bitch. I will, I will go into my savings, bitch, to get you down here to get Yandy and kill her ass back up to New York. Please, somebody, this is a cry for help. This ain't no joke. I need her out of here. I'm trying to see how we could deport or not. Get her out of here. Anyway, that was really all I got to touch on because this is a lot, girl. I did not want to be up here this long. Uh uh-uh. uh. Girl, y'all drop down in the comments and let me know what y'all thought about this, girl. I'm about to give me something to eat. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell and all of that. And I see y'all later. Bye. Mr. Carroll. How you give the voodoo doll time to talk? I don't get no fucking time to talk. Who the voodoo doll is? The nigga you just had up here.